Hello, and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Miriam Pierre Louis, and I'll be your host today. I'm broadcasting to you live from Eastern Massachusetts, and today we have Daniel Horowitz with us, who is live in the state of New Jersey for his class, How Photos Enhance Genealogical Research. Thanks to Daniel, and thanks to the more than 1,500 of you from 27 countries around the world for registering for today's live webinar. So wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you with us. I'd like to introduce our speaker. Daniel Horowitz, expert genealogist at MyHeritage, provides key contributions in the product development, customer support, and public affairs areas. He holds board-level positions at the Israeli Genealogy Research Association and the International Association of Jewish Genealogical Societies, among others. Daniel was a teacher and study guide editor for 15 years of the Family History Project, Searching for My Roots in Venezuela. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give Daniel Horowitz a nice warm webinar welcome. Daniel, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marianne. It's really a pleasure for me to be here in what it seems uh, from all over the country, a uh, wonderful, hot and sunny day. Yes. It seems like we're having a heat wave across the United States, maybe even Canada, too. So you've got your uh, screen ready and it's a great topic. Okay. So I'm going to mute myself and you take it away. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, but don't go too far because uh, I already know uh, you have some questions uh, line up over there and I would like to answer those as I uh, go on my presentation. Uh, so first let's uh, see a little bit of history because uh, I have heard a lot of people saying, well, you know, I'm trying to get photos of my relative, uh, but I only can get uh, some generations back. So we need to remember the history of uh, photography only start in 1820s uh, with two guys, uh, two different guys in two different places. They had the same idea, Joseph Nikofer Neffi. Uh, in 1825, he started a process called heliographic process in order to try to capture images of uh, nature and animals and people. And in the other uh, part of the world, uh, daguerreotypes were the first publicly used way of, uh, of doing photograph. Uh, and in this case, uh, the example I bring is one of the most uh, famous one uh, from 1837. So for sure, none of your relatives before the 1830s, 1840s will have an image. This was a process that first of all was very expensive. It took a lot of time uh, for the person or the object uh, to be exposed uh, into this uh, daguerreotype system. Uh, so also pictures of, uh, of people uh, using this system are very, very few. Uh, people had to stand still uh, in a chair or kind of straps so it will not move uh, for hours, actually, in some of the cases. So only 1850s are the actual common use of or starting to of uh, common use of photography. And uh, I like this. Uh, image very much that's explained a little bit of the uh, history of photography through the cameras. Uh, you can see also how the cameras change it. Uh, the first cameras again in the 1800s were very bulky, were not uh, portable at all, and they required a, a lot of uh, chemical devices and, and a lot of procedures. And it's only until the early 1900s uh, if you see more or less in the third line, uh, the 1910, 1912 is where you start to see more portable cameras, uh, some retractable cameras. Uh, probably those are the ones that the professional photographers had uh, back then in order to capture all this moment. So forget about 
personal or, or private people owning cameras. This was also very expensive. Uh, and one of the reasons that I know all this is because I, I have the honor and pleasure to own uh, a few of those cameras from the early 1900s. As uh, many of you may not know, my father was actually a photographer, uh, and he used some of those uh, cameras that you see below uh, on the very last line. Uh, he was a photographer in the 1970s and 1980s, uh, but he liked it to collect some of those old rare cameras that you can actually see uh, on the uh, antique shops as well. So all these cameras, and the more that we advance on the time, uh, were made more accessible. And this actually bring us to this box of photos that I'm pretty sure we all have. Uh, some of us in the attic, uh, some of us in the basement. Uh, believe me, none of them a very good place to store and save your photos, especially the old photos. Uh, colors will change, humidity will damage the photos. But I also understand that it may take a lot of time to go over this, uh, all these images that we, uh, most of us have inherited uh, from our ancestors. And, and we're all with very good intentions trying to say, well, one day I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna dedicate some time and uh, I'm gonna go over the images and try to identify my, uh, my relatives out there. Now, I understand also that for some people, this is not a reality. For some people, they don't have any picture or very few pictures of their families. Uh, again, floatings or, or natural disasters, war uh, sometimes uh, prevent uh, our families, our ancestors to pass on the images of, uh, of their family members. And I pretend to bring you today a little bit of a solution for that as well. So the first place where you should be looking for images of your family, believe it or not, your family pictures may be found in Google Images. Sometimes family members or yourself, you use Google uh, Photos or you use uh, other websites that help store and manage those photos. And sometimes those images are accessible through Google as well. Uh, one example that I can tell you is some of the albums of pictures that my heritage members uh, create and store on my heritage. Uh, if they are not privatized, if they are kept uh, public, Google will be able to go in and will be able to index them. Uh, also, I understand that Billion Graves uh, allow Google and other search engines, uh, Bing as well, uh, for example, to go in and to index their pictures. So you can always try to go with specific keywords. And in this case, in this example, I'm just looking for old family portrait studios when as, uh, I was preparing this uh, presentation to get some uh, examples for you. And uh, you can use either keywords or the names in your family members and, uh, and you will be able to maybe find uh, information. Now, keep in mind Google also for the next examples that I'm gonna give you because you will be using search engines quite a lot to find your family's uh, photos. Now, another place where you can find photos of your family are yearbooks. Yearbooks of high schools, of universities. Uh, and in this case, uh, I'm using my own examples from my uh, father's school uh, in Connecticut. Uh, and for, in the yearbooks, you may find two type of images. You may, you may find the personal image of, uh, of the graduate. M most of the times they gave the honor uh, to them to have a personalized uh, photo like this. And you will see not only the image, but also the name, 
and what they did and uh, the years that they study, the, the subjects uh, that they graduate from, or you can see group photos up, uh, in the different houses, the different sports that they practice during their years. Um, My Heritage has a wonderful collection of yearbooks, but there's also other websites like Classmate, uh, and I think it's yearbooks.com, uh, who also offer you a collection of yearbooks. You can always try to contact back uh, the school or the university. Normally at their local libraries, they hold a copy of every yearbook created or, or generated for that school. So if you don't find uh, on the internet the yearbook that you're looking for, try to do a little bit of research and learn where did your family members uh, study and contact those uh, faculties and those universities and ask them for yearbooks. They may even have extra copies that you can buy or ask them to digitize them for you. Another very good source are newspapers. And yes, uh, pictures in newspapers don't go uh, back that many years, but still uh, people published information about weddings, uh, about uh, all kinds of social events. And it's very nice to be able to find uh, images and faces of your relatives in the newspapers. Also obituaries. Uh, have or may have a portrait picture of your relative, uh, depending on the family and what they decided to uh, publish. So don't uh, uh, avoid newspapers, researching newspapers in order to find photos of your family. You can also find photos of your family in documents, especially in Europe, but all documents required, uh, like a passport today, all documents required a picture of the person. Normally, this picture was uh, attached, uh, as you can see in this example, uh, to the document, sometimes uh, also with a stamp that could be um, like what it's called a dry stamp or an ink stamp, like in, in this case. So when you go through your box of photos and you find a photo that has a corner with a stamp or that has a couple of, uh, of holes, take into account that that was the picture used for almost for sure in, uh, in a document. Now, in this case, if I would have only my uh, picture in here, this is actually my great grandfather, uh, you see the word Milano wrote in the stamp. Well, for for very lucky, uh, that word is on the image. And just by looking at the image, I will be able to learn that at some point in his life, my great grandfather uh, was in Italy, in Milano, uh, as part of his uh, journeys. I'm fortunate enough to have the complete document and then I can uh, see the exact date where he was in Italy. Now there's other place uh, to find information and to find more photos about your relative. And I, I think, uh, Marianne, that this is actually related to one of the questions that we had in the queue. Uh, if you don't mind to read it, it was related to the stamps uh, on the pictures yeah probably not by coincidence in the uk yep we had a question from m preston she's she or he said uh she want they want to find out how to track down photo studio stamps or, and data uh, regarding the uk and canada and how to trace photo studios um when you don't have when the studio information is missing yep okay so yes definitely uh the short answer will be google but let me tell you a little bit more about this for the rest of the audience who are probably not totally uh, familiar with uh, what's mentioning here. Uh, in this example of, uh, of this image of, of three people, and I may not know or may not know who they are, fortunately enough, somebody wrote 
the name of the people uh, on the bottom of the image. Uh, but more important than that is that this image has a stamp that tells me who was the photographer. And this is actually the case in many photos in Europe, all photos taped in Europe. Uh, let me do a zoom in so you can see better what I'm talking about. So this image was taken by uh, the studio photographers of uh, WND Downey. And the studio was uh, actually in two different locations, 57 and 61 of Ebury Street in London. And I'm only guessing it is uh, South Wales or Southwest. I'm not really familiar with this, but how can I find them? Why would I want to find more photos of this photographer? Well, assuming that I have this image in my pile that came to me from one of my ancestors. Uh, and I, as I said before, I may not know who they are, but if one of my ancestors went there or hired this photographer to come and to take a picture of uh, him or her, chances are that this was the family photographer or the person that was used more than one time at least. So yes, definitely, I want to see more pictures of W and D Downey. And again, the first way of finding, uh, I would say will be on Google. Try to put W and D Downing photographers. You have an address, you have a place. Sometimes you, the place uh, doesn't exist anymore uh, or change the name or change the address, but still Google Photos will be able to provide you with a lot of images from this photographer. And you may find in other images that uh, you don't own some of the family members that you will actually recognize. So definitely this is one of the ways to find your relative uh, images that uh, you may not have them uh, with you right now. Now, there are people and there are uh, websites out there also, also specialized on these different uh, stamps. Uh, one of my uh, suggestions for you today is start spreading the news. Uh, yes, I know that's a song, but I'm referring now to talk to all the family and friends, talk to all your networks, look into social media. Uh, if I remember correct, Marianne, it was Beth that was also asking uh, what she can do when uh, her family has no clue of who is in the picture, right? Yeah, it was Betty, and yes, she's she has a whole bunch of pictures, and she doesn't know who any of the people are. Okay, so Betty, the most important thing, and Marianne didn't read that on the question live, but don't throw them away. <laughs> no matter if you don't know who we are, don't throw them away. Uh, the first thing that you should do is upload all those pictures and take the time to digitize all those images and upload to as many places as you can. Uh, I'm going to show you today how to use uh, my heritage in order to upload those images, but also to Facebook, also to other specialized websites. Uh, there is one website there that on the top of my head, Dead Fred. Uh, another one I remember is Ancestorsville. Uh, there are many websites out there that will be more than happy to receive your, um, let's say, your, your non-identified pictures. And uh, your pictures may or may not have names will, that will help other people but only if you upload them to those websites uh, with the location where this image came from, more or less, and even if it's only a state, if you don't have a county or you don't have a specific city, that will be of help to somebody else that may be able 
to identify somebody in that image. So crowdsource it, put it out there, ask people. You may not know who they are, but and, and may not be all the people related to you, but if this is somebody else's great grandfather and that somebody else knew that uh, his relative had a friendship with other people in your area, he or she may be able to provide you with some names and then together you will be able to find out who the people in the image uh, are. Uh, believe me, it breaks my heart. Uh, and as a genealogist, one of my passions besides cemeteries is to go to antique shops and, and flea markets. And it breaks my heart just to go there and see in some of the stands those piles of photos, uh, some of them with names, some of them even with dates. Uh, others, of course, totally blank but uh, totally orphans and, and looking, desperately looking for relative. And I can only imagine people out there uh, looking for those pictures and probably the only uh, image that they can have from their uh, ancestors. So please don't throw it away. Try to digitize them, try to network with friends, with historical societies, with genealogy societies, social media, spread the word out there and uh, and try to find a uh, home for those uh, for those photos another option that even maybe will bring you a little bit of money will be to put them on ebay uh, and why i'm saying this and unfortunately i couldn't find the screen capture that i had from a couple of years ago when i was just browsing things on ebay and just by chance, I found a picture of my great grandfather posted right there. Of course, that I managed to trace it. And I know that uh, when my great, my great grandfather passed away, somebody came and cleaned up the apartment and gave away uh, all the old stuff and the paperwork and the pictures to an antique shop that had uh, a website or, or a subscription to eBay, and they're uploading pictures up there. So as you can see in, in this example, uh, I'm just looking for portrait photos, but same as in Google, if you add probably the last name of your relatives, or if you add the place where your relative came from, you may be able to find images of your relatives or other images that may help you identify the images that you have. And if at the end of the day, you will decide to post all your photos and either uh, charge just a couple of bucks for them and somebody can find them, at least you will be doing uh, a few money and some money uh, from here. So now, that you already learned where to find photos if you don't have one. Now let's go to that basement or to that attic and let's bring that box of uh, pictures, all photos that you have uh, with you. And let's start doing exactly what I did the first time I saw this picture. Now, this picture is from my singer uh, family branch from my paternal grandmother. And this was a picture that appeared in every house of any aunt and uncle that I visited. And it doesn't matter where the place in the world. So this is kind of the seal that certifies that the person, whoever has this picture, is related to me in somehow. In, in the middle, you of course have the uh, oldest person, uh, next to what we uh, can assume very surely it's uh, his wife. And then surrounded, you will have his children and uh, grandchildren with the spouses or the kids on the back. So what I did and always did with all the pictures is starting to ask, who is this one and who is this one and how this one is related 
to this other one. And this is actually one of the things that brought me into genealogy, trying to understand who are these people, how these people are related among themselves and with me. Fortunately enough, I had my grandparents to ask and uh, they knew most of the people in the picture, but no worries. Uh, I had pictures where nobody knew anything about it. So let's understand a little bit of those uh, images or these photos that you are going to see. Uh, this is another example from that box of pictures. And one of the first things uh, that you should look is for details on the image, on the background. The previous image, you could see that it was stage uh, and it was in a studio. This image is already a more recent one. It's on a street. You have different signs that you can look at. You can see also the difference on the clothing of the person and, and that will give you also uh, hints on uh, the time frame where uh, and how the picture was taken. But one of the first things that we should remember always to do when you have an old picture is to turn it around and pray. You pray that actually somebody wrote in the back the names of the people that you see over there so this is the picture of Rita and Freddy. Of course, two people, two names, very easy to know who is Rita and who is Freddy. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, you have a date. Uh, that will be the 5th of uh, September, 1939. And the picture was taken on a place, Chernovitz or Chernivtsi, today in Ukraine. So I have all the information that I need uh, to know and to understand who is the people in this uh, image. Not everybody is so lucky. Not always you will have uh, this uh, piece of information. Sometimes you may even get luckier because remember that all pictures were also used as postcards. So you may find in the back, not only the names and the dates, but the whole story. You can have the story of the family a message that once uh, uh, send from one place to the other. Uh, hopefully you have an address also of the place and you have a perfect date over there. So you can definitely learn a lot from those old images. This is another picture of my uh, singer's ancestors. And this is a picture, again, that I found in many of the houses of uh, my uh, aunts and uncles. This was kind of the picture that represented uh, the three brothers. Uh, and this is my great-great-grandfather sitting on the extreme uh, uh, right of the screen uh, with his two brothers. The only problem is that uh, as I met other family members and I visit them and I exchange information with them. Uh, someday, one of my cousins said, you know, I have a bunch of old pictures here, including our great grandfathers uh, and their ancestors. Would you like me to send you a picture? And thanks God he didn't heard my answer because what I answered him was, well, you know, thank you very much, but not need to do it. I already have this picture. And why I'm saying I'm so grateful that he sent me the picture that he had, because the picture that he had was actually like this. He actually had four people in that image. And you may see a resemble uh, between all of them. You can see that their dress code is pretty much the same. The beard is the same. The hat is the same. You can definitely say that those are brothers. So my three zingers ended being four. What I understand from this picture and just looking at it as it is now, and I haven't done any Photoshop uh, on this image, is that somebody previously did some kind of very rudimental Photoshop. They just pasted a picture of the fourth brother 
they pasted with the other three just to make it look like if they were sitting all together. But this is a fourth brother, uh, which of course brought a lot of questions, not only who he is, his name and uh, dates and how he's related and, and how we are related to him and the other descendants that may be from this person, but also why he was not with the other three brothers at the time of the uh, when the picture was taken. Obviously, it's a different place. Probably, it's even uh, a different time, uh, although it it's probably in the same years, but not exactly uh, the same day that this picture was taken from the other three brothers. And again, the family wanted to keep all the brothers together. They wanted to pass this information that uh, the ancestors' uh, forefathers were were four and no three, and giving me a little bit of hard time trying to uh, crack this nut and, and try to see uh, who this guy is and how I can add it to my family tree. So uh, be very careful when you look at images, when somebody else offers you uh, a copy of whatever they have, it's always good to say yes, to receive everything. And then if you have duplicated, you can decide uh, what to do with them but you may get some surprises during your research. Now, this is another photo that I recently got uh, from a family of mine, and I had very few information about it. I only know that this is from the northern part of Romania, um, where my maternal line is coming from. But one of the very distinctive ways of uh, pinpoint the time of this picture and I can see here uh, that this is kind of a shop or, or house uh, slash shop uh, that the family had and this may not be my direct family. Uh, you can see the um, clothing of the people in the picture but definitely the most uh, identifying icon on this image is the soldier that you can see in front of this uh, stand or this store. And he's wearing a helmet, he's wearing a uniform. And what I managed to do was looking at other people in uniform uh, from Romania, uh, thanks again to Google and some expert advice of, uh, of other people that have a lot of uh, images from this area. And we managed to pinpoint that this photo is more or less from World War I uh, because of the uniform of the soldier. Now, I don't think that the idea of this photo was uh, to portray the individuals, but more to take a scene of what was uh, going on on the, that town at the day. But again, I know that this is a Hungarian soldier uh, in Romania, so I can pinpoint uh, with quite good precision the time where this picture was taken. So try to look into all the details and, and make sure that you don't miss anything. Sometimes you may want to zoom in uh, on the picture and try to see uh, the details. Uh, you can also use a CSI style, I would call, uh, reflections on mirrors or in uh, windows to try to catch up other details that may appear in the photo. Now, also very interesting will be to analyze those images that you have and try to learn mm, the more uh, of what you can from the picture. Uh, in this case, again, as you can see, Singers. Uh, this is one of my advanced uh, branch uh, research branch in my family. Uh, locations are very important. And I received this uh, picture very recently from one of my uh, cousins. And you can see and read right there. This is a grocery store. They're selling tea, coffee, butter, eggs. You see the owner uh, in front or at least the um, spouse of the owner, M. Singer, which also matches the sign and matches the family tree. 
the only problem is that this lady is called Mali and she was married to a Max. So I'm still uh, evaluating and trying to get some records to see if this was her store or his store, but probably because of the dress code and the time frame of the store, she was not used to, uh, ladies or a woman were not, uh, I, mean, I don't want to say allowed, but used to own uh, properties or, sto or stores on their name. Now, I can only guess that this is located in New York because all my singers in the United States were concentrated in the New York area. And as you can see at both sides of the uh, um, store um, sign, it says 722. So I'm taking the risk and I'm guessing that this is the number in the street where this store is located. So how I can get an accurate location thanks to this photo? Well, the first thing I did, uh, I went into my heritage, into the map, a pedigree map feature, and I asked for the location of all my singers, which I know they were all in New York, concentrated in Brooklyn. And I see with all the dots and the numbers that most of them actually uh, indeed were in Brooklyn and had different facts in the Brooklyn area. So now that I know that they were born, living and died in this area, I went to Google map and I took the address that I knew for Max and Molly, which is the 1619 of 58th Street in Brooklyn, New York. That's right there in Google map. And then I just started to change the address to 722. And of course, you will get a few 722s. Uh, you have one in Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn, but there is also one in 55, 55th Street, also in Brooklyn, and Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn. So I started to click one on one of these addresses and try to see where they are located. Uh, in this case, the Fifth Avenue location, then I use the directions to see how close, uh, and I didn't expect them to be using car, but it's fairly close to the, the address that I have for their house. It's a 15 minute ride by car, probably a 20 minute, 30 minute by bus, uh, which is what I think they use in the uh, middle 1900s when their this picture probably was, uh, was taken. And uh, one interesting uh, fact that I learned from Google Maps using the uh, location or, or the little yellow guide that you can drop up on the, max, uh, on the map and get a view of the actual uh, street right now and, and walk the streets uh, from most of the place in the world is that today at least in September 2017, this was still a grocery. And it's very understandable that in the main street where all the stores are located uh, and a previous grocery that was used in that corner, probably the new owners uh, or the people that are now using it will not want to um, invest on a lot of remodeling so the main doors at the uh, center of the store, the glass windows at the side and the sign upstairs will tell me that this really looked like my uh, cousin's uh, store. And if I go to uh, street views, especially in the United States, or mostly I have seen this in the United States, Google does uh, continuous updates on their maps. I could actually go back to 2009 and I can see how this grocery store looked in 2009 right here. Uh, you still have, again, the door in the middle, uh, the windows at the sides. In that time, uh, Guerrero Food Center uh, had some food outside. 
Uh, in this case, in 2007, they didn't have any, but we are very sure that this is the location of the Singer Grocery uh, Store in Brooklyn, New York, which will make easier for me now to go to the archive and try to look for paperwork or any other details of my family uh, owning this place. And probably I will be able to trace uh, uh, signatures and more details of my family right there. Now, again, uh, you need to understand the photograph. Uh, remember, back in the good old days, not everybody had a camera as we have today. We actually today have digital phones that could be used to take uh, pictures in special locations, the background stage. Now, how to digitize documents? And uh, I'm running a little bit late with this uh, presentation, Marianne, just for you to know. I, you have different options, and I'm going to try to go a little bit fast through all of this. Uh, you can buy a very inexpensive scanner um, on, on any technology store and spend your time doing that. Uh, you can also attach your digital camera to a tripod and do this uh, faster than with the scanner, and probably today those cameras are going to have a better resolution uh than the regular scanners and one of my favorites way will be the way that i call the spy way and this is what i do when i go to my cousin's house uh, because they always have a document they always have a photo that i'm missing uh, and they offer very kind to scan it and send it to me in the next couple of days but with all the good intentions uh they never do it so probably this picture that i'm taking with my phone uh, although it may be a little bit dark, a little bit blurry, it will be probably the best picture that I can get from this photo on this document. Now, regarding digitization, a lot of people have always asked me about resolution uh, and the format, uh, what you should pick and choose in order to save that image. Well, 300 DPI, which is dots per inch, is quite fine to save. If you pretend later on to reproduce this image and to do a printout, I would definitely suggest you to go to 600 DPI. Now, just take in account that the more dots per inch that an image has, it means that the image takes more space. It needs more space on your hard drive. It needs more space on, a, on an external drive. Uh, and then also, depending on the format, if it's a, a TIFF or a BMP or a JPEG, uh, definitely I will suggest you a TIFF, which is a, a more real color format. It doesn't do any compression. It doesn't do anything uh, to the pixels. In that image, BMPs and JPEGs try to reduce the amount of colors that you have over there and simplify it and make the picture also more portable or less uh, bulky. Now, for you to understand the difference uh, more clearly, I took a picture of this record with two different cameras with two different resolutions. Now, you can see the record right here very well because it, this is uh, a zoom out of the document. But if I would go and zoom into the original size of the document, on the left side of your screen, you will have the image with 300 DPI. On your right side of the screen, you see the image with 600 DPI. So 600 will give you a bigger image. It will give you the option to do zoom in uh, bigger and, and get more details of the image. But sometimes the 300, again, as I said, uh, it may be enough to read what it says over there and to share this with other people. You can also have uh, some portable scanners like FlipPal, which the great advantage of it is that you don't need to connect it to a computer. It works with a memory card and batteries and it's very portable, as you can see there. You can also hire a company to do this work for you. Definitely, this will save you time, but I don't know if you're willing to send them by mail all your old pictures. And you should also read very carefully 
the instructions because some of these um, companies out there, they're offering you very high quality scanned images, uh, even for $1 uh, per image, and they will send you both a disk uh, or you can download the, uh, the images later on from the internet. But what you need to read on the fine prints is that the last step that they do is they recycle the images. And by recycle, I meaning destroying all the paper material and actually recycling the paper to be used in uh, other products. And again, I don't know you, I definitely don't want the pictures of my great grandfather uh, to become a notebook or a newspaper in another state. There is another option that was used or very used a couple of years ago, and it seems to be coming back. Genealogy conferences. Companies like uh, Family Search and others are offering free digitization during the different events. So last week I was at FGS and they were very happy to digitize all the material that you brought with you, either books or um, photos, whatever you had. They would digitize it for you. They will give you a flash drive or a thumb drive with all the images there and will return the originals to you in perfect shape. Now you can also do this by yourself, as I mentioned before, with your mobile devices. There are plenty of apps out there, both for Android and for um, um, iPhone, right there. You can download the apps. Some of them are free. Some of them are for a price. Uh, you can take the picture. You can edit the image, you can center it more or better. And then the big advantage is that if it's in your phone, once you have scanned it, you will be able to upload it to Google Maps, uh, I'm sorry, to Google Photos and share them with your family uh, all over the world. This will be one of the ways of sharing images with uh, everybody. Another way, of course, will be using the MyHeritage platform. Uh, just a little bit about it. We started uh, building family trees. Later on, we uh, include some matching technology, both between trees and with the billions of records right now, 9.2 billions of records that we hold. But we ever, uh, since the beginning, we allow people to upload images and to have the faces of their relatives on their family trees. It looks better and it allows you to recognize the people easier. Now, the only lie that we tell you is when you go to the MyHeritage website under photos and you want to upload photos, even we say drag and drop the photos and videos here, we actually support any other digital file that you would like to use not necessary photos and videos. If you have an audio recording, if you have an Excel, the Word, the PDF, a movie, everything that is in your computer or almost everything that is in your computer, you can upload on MyHeritage. You will see uh, all the media. It's called, now let's uh, uh, call it by its name, the media information right there uh, in different albums. The albums uh, are going to be created by you, just like you have your different albums at home. And we are going to create virtual albums for every individual in your images. So if you wanna see from all the images, only the ones related to your great grandfather, for example, you can click on people on the left side and then look for your great grandfather. You click here, and all the images where, where your great-grandfather appears will be presented to you. How my heritage will know where your great-grandfather appears? Well, let me open one image and, and show you what we do with the, with the image. First of all, we apply face recognition. So we will detect where the faces appear in the image, uh, and you can also tag them uh, very easily, you just click on the face and you start writing the name. The names are going to be brought uh, from your family tree. So 
recommendation is always to have first a family tree uh, uploaded to my heritage and then start working with the images if you are tagging a living individual in your tree that you previously have invited him with his email address uh register then he will receive a message saying that you tag him in a photo it will invite him to come and to see the photo where you have tagged him now another very interesting feature of my heritage is the comment space that you have right here in the bottom the way i use it is i write over there questions about the image if i don't know who is in the photo if i don't know where uh, or when this picture was taken i just ask that in the comment that comment will go to everybody on my family whoever knows the answer will come and will write uh, over there the answer and i will have both the image and the history of the image written in one place uh, to be more rich. My Heritage also has a mobile app and through the app you can also add personal photos of different individuals just by going into the person's uh, profile. You will see it on the left panel, you click on the plus and we will offer you both to upload a picture of directly from the camera on from the gallery. This is something I use a lot every time I meet with my cousins, especially uh, on family events. If I am missing a picture of somebody in the family, I just need to find him on the family tree, ask permission, point the camera to him, take the picture and automatically will be uploaded to my heritage. Uh, on the main part of the app, on the photo section, you can also see the different albums that you have created. You can add photos or add albums right from uh, the mobile device uh, very easily. And again, it will work pretty much the same as uh, on the website. You will have people identified. You can tag individuals on the photo. If somebody else uploaded a photo in your website, you will be able to save it to your library or to download it to your computer. Or if you don't like that photo, you can always delete it at any time because after all, that is your uh, photo and your material. Uh, finally, I would like just uh, to bring up uh, my family tree with the pictures of the family that I have uh, found again for my uh, singer family. And you will have to agree with me that it's much nicer to see a family tree with all the faces than if all of them would be silhouettes uh, as the upper level, the oldest uh, generation that I have. Again, previous uh, 18, uh, mid of 1800s. So I really don't expect to find the images for that generation as well. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, Maureen Taylor and put a good word for her. Uh, she is called also the photo detective. She is really an expert analyzing the different images. If you still have images that you really don't know when or where they were taken, she spends her life looking at those images and learning what was the hairstyle, what was the dress code, what was the background. Uh, of the images and she can pinpoint you with a lot of knowledge uh, the information of that image that you are looking for. She also have a book, she also have a website, so definitely uh, one of the experts out there that you should consider. And always take into account that during time, history of photographic uh, have changed uh, from the Early 18, from the mid 1800s, as I mentioned before, this is from my Pollock family, my great great grandfather, uh, who died before 1937 at the age of 60. Uh, and this is the only image that survived and that probably he ever allowed or uh, managed to take, uh, to be taken from him. And if I need to compare it to my today nine-year-old daughter, where I have thousands and thousands of pictures of her, uh, which of course mostly are 
in my digital camera and not always be uh, enjoyed uh, by the whole family. So consider, consider this whenever you are analyzing those pictures and whenever you are looking for those relative in those images. Well, uh, with this, I will finish my presentation. I will thank you all for being here uh, and for your interest in the different uh, images and photos. I hope my recommendations uh, are useful to really continue your research and to find answers to your family tree. Uh, I will pass the microphone to Marianne because I do know that she has a couple of announcements and even door prices is my understanding. And uh, I will be here for the question round. Hey, uh, Daniel, before you go, do you mind um, backing up to your family tree for a second where you had the pictures? Sure. Because uh, right right there. So Debbie had a picture, uh, a question, and she wanted to know about the black line on the top. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the black line on the tab uh, on the top is what identifies uh, people that have uh, died, that have perished. So in here, uh, you actually see my parents uh, on the bottom, and this kind of is uh, a little bit of a of an old photo because for those of you that know me uh, better and close, you know that my father passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, that's why he doesn't have here yet. Uh, the black line, but the black ribbon here will uh, will identify that the person have died. Right. Even uh, I'm sorry, even if you don't know anything about the person, like in in this case up here in in my very top line, uh, my heritage gives you an option to mark that person as deceased, and and I don't know when or where that person died, but believe me the father of a person that was born in 1800s is dead no question about it all right great thank you so much daniel i am going to uh, mute you there for a second give you a little bit of a break we'll bring this back to my screen let's just make sure that you guys are seeing the right thing yep great uh just before i carry on with the announcements uh, brian said brilliant webinar uh, Debbie said, wonderful webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, Marilyn's saying, very interesting and informative. And it's going on from there. So, um, yep, people are people are very happy with uh, your overview. Okay, let's, before we do some Q&A uh, with Daniel, let's do uh, upcoming live webinars. So this is the My Heritage series, uh, this webinar today, and it's always done on a Tuesday. And in September, we've got the importance of newspapers for family research, and that will be September 25th. In October, uh, we've got On the Go, using your mobile device for genealogy. And then in uh, another one in October, we've got True Stories of Families Reunited Thanks to Genetic Genealogy. Oh, I have to tell you, uh, I always have to watch those ones. I can't resist, you know. Uh, you always got to get the hanky out for those ones, but I uh, love that kind of stuff. So that's what we have to look forward to coming up in September and October. All right. We've got two door prizes. So the first one is a one-year uh, My Heritage Complete Plan. I'm not going to read through all of this here, but it looks like it's the Premium Plus Family Site subscription, and it's for a full year. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly... Uh, pick somebody from the, the list. There's a whole lot of people here. So um, let's see. The, the winner for that is Teresa Cosgrove. So congratulations, Teresa. Okay. And believe it or not, the screen didn't change because our second door prize is the same. Let me just make sure I didn't. Yep. It looks the same. Okay. Uh, our second door price is the same thing. So another one year My Heritage Complete uh, plan. And I am going to just pick somebody for that. And um, the winner for that is um, Dan Reinhardt. So congratulations, Dan. All right. Great. Let's see here. Okay. So now uh, we'll do 
questions for about 15 minutes with Daniel. And let me unmute him. And so if you have a question, uh, you can put that into the chat. And let's see here. Daniel, first question. Um, you had mentioned some websites. This is from Colleen. You had mentioned some web websites like Dead Fred and Ancestorville, um, which are for unidentified pictures. Uh, were there any others that I'm missing besides Dead Fred and Ancestorville that you mentioned? Uh, definitely, yes. There are a ton of uh, websites out there that deals with, uh, with this kind of old pictures. Uh, either um, pictures that are not being recognized or don't have names, uh, orphan photos. Uh, the very best uh, suggestion that I can give you is, uh, is Google. Use Google just uh, simply as my son does. Uh, anytime he needs to, to know something, he just goes there and asks the question. Uh, all photos uh, website or uh, orphan photos website. I'm pretty sure you will find a lot of uh, websites out there. All right. uh, the more do you you go uh, into the, those communities, you can ask them also to uh, to those communities, and they they will also give you new leads. Okay. All right. I'm going to just share that one there. Um, so go to Google and search for orphan photos. All right, let's see. Is uh, Debbie wants to know a slightly different twist. Um, are there any websites to go to for unlabeled pictures that are looking for homes? I know you had mentioned Dead Fred is a place where you can go and find. Um, hmm. I'm wondering how. I'm, I'm wondering, Debbie, what you're. You, what you're thinking is like you want to give the pictures back to these people. I don't know if there's any website specifically for like helping lost photos find their homes. Mm, yes, yes, they are. Again, uh, and depending if you have or no or, or not the name, uh, but also look for for websites uh, that I'm sure are there uh, for non-identifying photos, uh, and use the location. Use the location uh, where the photo is or, or was taken, and, and hopefully you will be able to help other uh, families to reunite with their pictures. All right. Uh, Shirley has a question about um, when your demonstration on MyHeritage, where you were showing uh, how you can upload photos and you can tag people and all that. Um, she wants to know, what type of membership do you have to have at MyHeritage in order to take advantage of the photo sharing and the tagging and everything? Okay, so let's start with a free subscription. You like that? I like that. The free subscription. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't, right? Who doesn't? Uh, the, the free subscription allows you to have a family tree of 250 people uh, and will allow you to upload uh, about probably, uh, if I remember correct, is five gigabytes uh, of photos uh, or probably 2.5 gigabytes of photos. The, the, the number exactly uh, escape uh, my mind right now. Uh, but you will be able to upload a, a bunch of photos up there and use all the features of tagging and, and doing comments on the images. Uh, if you need more space, uh, for your images, then you may need to get a premium subscription, which will give you a little bit more, or a premium plus subscription, which will give you unlimited. Uh, so whenever you are on the MyHeritage website and you try to upgrade, you will be able to see exactly how much uh, a image space you have for your photos on the different plans. Okay, great. So there's um, multiple options. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, another question about my heritage from Corinne. She says, when photos are copied to other trees, can we see who originally uploaded the photo and when? Mm, well, 
Yes, if you find a photo on my heritage, uh, either uh, using the search engine or or by a match, you will be able to see who is the owner of the picture. The owner of the picture is whoever uploaded that picture. The name may not be um, how I said, like uh, the the real name or the original name. Some people use aliases. Yeah, the username. Uh, so you will, yeah. 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 So you will see their username, but also you will be able to communicate with that person. So if for some reason you discover an image of a family of you owned by somebody who you don't know who the person is, uh, a premium subscription or a premium plus subscription, uh, a complete subscription, which definitely the ones you have uh, raffled today, uh, the complete includes a premium plus subscription, is actually needed to contact that photo owner, that other administrator of uh, of the person. But yes, every image, it, it will be sourced with the owner of uh, or the person that upload the picture. All right. Uh, Marie is saying, uh, when we find pictures using Google, will we know that those pictures come from MyHeritage or other source? And are those photos just identified as a, or are those pictures just identified as appearing from Google? So if you find well, something, no. yeah. Yeah. If, when, when you find a picture in Google, Google will tell you uh, where he found it. What is the URL of the image? What is the source of the image? It will actually allow you to go with one click to the page where that image appears. Uh, you may not be able to see the page because sometimes the pages are behind the paywall and, and this is not the case of my heritage, but other websites uh, and still be discoverable by uh, Google. Uh, and then you can uh, also uh, like see the URL and see the source of the image and know where the image is, is coming from. Google will not um, will not say that the image is from Google. Google found it in other places. Even if it's in Google Photos, uh, it's in Google Photos of somebody. Okay. Um... This is an interesting question uh, along the same lines. Jackie wants to know, is MyHeritage the only one with face recognition? And I think we can answer that two ways. First, we can say, is MyHeritage the only genealogy database site with facial recognition? And then we can say more generally, you know, outside of uh, genealogy. Well, um, I learned, again, very recently, that's why you go to genealogy conference, guys. Uh, I learned that Family Search started to apply face recognition. Now, right now, it's only to compare two photos, which they are, are, are advertising it as upload a photo of your ancestor and upload a photo of yourself, and they will compare both photos and tell you how much do you resemble uh, this ancestor. Uh, I don't know if this is a new feature. I definitely learned it uh, very recently. Uh, haven't had the time to experiment uh, with it. So until then, I have to say, yes, my heritage was uh, the only website, genealogy website, dedicated uh, with photos with face recognition. So, yeah, we, we actually had uh, another, a different technology before, uh, but right now we're using face detection uh, on every image that you upload. So it will be easier to identify those people. And of course, if you look outside of genealogy to just, you know, photo companies and stuff like that, Google Photos or Adobe products, things like that, there are lots of companies that have facial recognition, but not specifically for the genealogy. Community. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when you upload pictures to Google, for example, to Google Photos, both from your mobile device or your website, uh, they will apply face recognition and they will group also the uh, the faces. So you can also see all your pictures of, of your mother, of, of your brother, your son, 
any individuals over there and they will uh, actually also um, suggest you to share those images with them. All but, right. but it's not genealogy. Two more questions for you and then we will let you go. Um, the first one, and this is just a real quick question, uh, Sunny wants to know, uh, does the metadata upload with the photo to MyHeritage? You yes. know, like if you have uh, a description or something. Yeah, uh, every picture taken with a digital camera today will have metadata. M metadata. Uh, and depending on the camera, you will have more or less. Uh, you may have not only the a type of camera that took the picture, but sometimes, and, and this is probably the important thing, you will have geolocation where the picture was taken. So the, all that information is kept with the image. And in fact, on the screen that I show uh, with the image and the tagging occurs, there is also one link over there that you can click and you can see that or part of the metadata that it's safe uh, with the image. Okay. And let's see, last question for today. Um, can you just talk a little bit about the difference between TIFF and JPEG for scanning? This is a yes, question I'm, I'm, for I'm seeing that question also coming uh, over and over. So uh, there are both formats of uh, images, uh, ways of saving the image into your digital image into a computer. Uh, the TIFF is a format that doesn't mess around with the colors as much, at least, as a JPEG. Uh, JPEG has a limitation of 256 colors, meaning that if you have, uh, let's say, five different tones of yellow, uh, which are very similar one to the other, uh, compression process may mix those into one yellow, which for the eye may be almost uh, impossible to detect, but when you go into the digital image, the, dig the image will have only 256 colors. While the TIFF will preserve the original colors, it has a, a more extend option of colors to save it. Uh, it will manipulate, it will compress less the spaces. Uh, sometimes also empty pixels or, or same color pixels will, will be replaced. Uh, and will be manipulated by, by the format. TIFF is a, is a more natural way to save the images. But again, you will be paying on the size of the image. Uh, a TIFF image is much more heavier and, uh, and you will need more space. Some websites may not uh, accept TIFF images to be uh, uploaded to their uh, to their website so you will need to keep like a TIFF image uh, as a backup and then generate a jpeg image which is very easy you can also google uh, image free image converters and find a, a good couple of ones uh, out there in the cloud and then use that jpeg image in order to upload it uh, to the website my heritage does allow you to upload if uh, format images. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for coming by today and sharing your knowledge of photos with us and for inspiring us uh, to get more actively involved with our photos and, and for uploading them. Um, I, think, I think it's nicer too when you can see the picture of your ancestor in your family tree. It always makes it a little bit more special. Uh, so thanks again to Daniel. Thank you to everyone here today uh, for stopping by and watching the webinar. And we will see you all online the next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.